niggas, man. Little buff dude, one of the dudes, real buff, kind of thick, dark skin cat. And he's from the streets too. I can't think of this nigga name. I'm seeing his face. But uh, Cliff came from that. Cliff stayed in the game. I did extra work, and I used to know Cliff from hanging out. And I'm every time I watch a movie, any of these kind of black movies off of BET Plus or some other medium sized budget movie, that nigga's in every. I said, this nigga working like a motherfucker. Cliff, I probably made over. 150 movies. Mm. I mean, ain't no big budget shit, but if a nigga making, you know, 20 grand a film mm. and he doing 15 films a year on average, looks like that much. Cause, I mean, I watched, I think I was videoing mm. this one night. And I must have watched about two movies in one night. And then I watched a third one. And it's like every movie I clicked on that nigga was in some kind of daddy role or a banker or a businessman because he's older now. He didn't shave his head off. But I remember this, dude. And these movies are being produced for a substantially lower budget. They're shooting this shit now where your average actor is making, you know, 20, 25,000. And these are lead actors, 20, 25, $30,000 a movie. They're not making big money, but hell, when you got multiple projects back to back, they wrap up and shoot something in three weeks. And you got a week off, and then you on the set again to shoot another one. You know, it adds up real quick. You need to do 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. You're doing 15 minutes, and I'm making some nice money, and he's doing what he loves with all the perks that come with it. Like, right, there's a bunch of shit out there. Everybody's streaming shit now. Netflix was smart. Amazon's smart. Every time I click on something, Netflix, Amazon, your mentor, that nigga, he's the two ninety nine king. Oh, you want to watch a movie? Click. Uh, if it ain't yeah. an open free app, you got to click. Get a nigga two ninety nine or buy a whole series for twenty four dollars. Mm-hmm. Shit, I, I, I see why that nigga get rich, man. That nigga got a whole video movie content streaming platform with hundreds of fucking movies. They just they making shit on top of shit on top of shit, and. All you gotta do is click two ninety nine if you want the ultra high definition. It's three ninety nine, or and if you want the series, if it's a seven part series, because a lot of these movies now they got like ten minute episodes, and then you go to the next episode. And at the end of the day, instead of watching a movie that really is an hour and a half, they they cut it up, and so you gotta pay. They might give you the first one free, so you get the introduction for free, which is smart. Mm. You go to teaser. And then they go to teaser, and then now I got the teaser, and for me to go through series two, I got to put the card on the line, two ninety nine, Or they'll let you just get a membership to Amazon Prime, and I think it's like $98 a year, and then you have unlimited streaming for the whole year, which makes more sense to me. Mm-hmm. There's stuff that I don't watch that I would like to watch, Niggas are getting bad. But at the end of the day, man, all these haters and these niggas is talking shit ain't getting their money. Because mm-hmm. you get your money, you can't, you don't have time to worry about what the next motherfucker doing. You really don't. True. I don't. And I ain't got no whole bunch of nothing, but I don't talk about my niggas in the streets. I ain't got time to worry about what a nigga doing. You know, two of the niggas I know, them niggas are still actually still selling dope. I'm talking about still selling dope on the street level. I'm like, wow, I can't judge. I can't say shit because I did this shit. How you gonna because a nigga tell me, like, how you gonna judge me and that you did this shit thirty years ago? And you're right, I can't say shit. Mm-hmm. Between them, the police or whoever this shit is, how they can work. Well, uh, it is what it is. A couple of most of the niggas I know that they done got regular jobs, whether it's moving or hauling or Sanitation, they work for the city, probation department, firemen. Niggas, you know, they move, they move, they switching the game around, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, a couple of niggas ain't really involved. Niggas still in the street, man, selling water and germ and meth and all kind of shit. Weed, like, damn, nigga, you got the candy store open. And the niggas still don't have no money. A nigga walk around here about 10 racks on the other day. Now he's trying to be broke again. I'm like, damn, what you niggas doing? Mm-hmm. You ain't putting no money up. Ain't no social security for that nigga, man. You ain't invested into the system. You ain't paying no taxes. 
he was doing some security work. Uh, nigga, that's, he don't, you know, he, he's one of them niggas you can't tell him what to do, so. And at the end of the day, ooh, fuck. It is what it is. Then nothing was crazy though, man. Broad was talking last night, right? To Kevin, right? Mm-hmm. How the bitch try to make Kevin accountable for what other motherfuckers say? That was goofy the motherfucker. I was like, and Kevin had to break it down to him. I was kind of like doing something. I was like, damn. This bro is trying to treat and Kevin say, told the bitch, he can't, he can't be accountable for what another motherfucker say about people say in the comments section. I was like, damn, I can't believe the bro actually said that shit. So she blamed him for the comment that somebody wrote in, in the, the comments. comments that, like, well, you're trying to make him accountable for what other motherfuckers say, you know, what mo other motherfuckers say about other motherfuckers. Kevin ain't got no, he has no control over what another motherfucker say. And the bitch kind of said in a slick way, then when he drilled her ass, then she tried to switch it up. No, no, I wasn't saying it like that. The bitch was saying that, you know, the things that he say influence, man, motherfuckers going to say what the fuck they want to say, dog. Yeah. Regardless if it's right, regardless if it's wrong, regardless of who like and who don't like it, whatever make a motherfucker, high, whatever make a motherfucker stimulate a nigga mind, stimulate a person's soul, make them feel some kind of way, they gonna say that shit. But back what I, but back what I was saying earlier, when it when it comes to when guys and girls, it's like you know all these women are single, they single because a lot of bitches y'all side bitches. A lot of bitches are side bitches. A lot of bitches are 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 not the is not the first choice. Like a lot of dudes are not the first choice for us when it comes to women. That's why they fuck with the the the, the goddamn skinnies and shit. Because skinny is the the type of guy they more desire a skinny. They know skinny is what skinny is, but they really they want the skinny dude. They don't want they don't want bread. They want skinny. In a, in a broad mind, they feel I got this between my legs. Well, I just want to pee. I just want to be part of his life. Fuck, you know, because he make me feel some kind of way. And that's what happens with a lot of motherfuckers. Until they get their motherfucking, get their backs broke. Hell, uh, I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm nobody's side piece right now. I don't know. If, I can't honestly say if I've ever been anybody's side. Well, when I dated a woman who was married and separated. But, you know, yeah, but I'm you know what? The, skin, in the day on skinny, a lot of bitches say one thing, but it, man, women have orbiters. See, one thing, us, when you understand this part of the game, you uh, you understand it is what it is. A motherfucker bra, so many bras are married, got niggas, they would never tell you, nigga. If they, if they feel, if they feel they sexually attracted to you, skinny, they will fuck you, nigga. If they are attracted to you. They ain't gonna tell y'all, I got, I got this man, I got nigga. Because first of all, a lot of dudes don't go into the picture asking, hey, you got a man, hey. A man just gonna go right with, with the broad with the whatever the door the, the door of opportunity that that broad open up. That's the door the nigga gonna slide in. Did, did well, the, well, the, I, think, the, I think you know if you married, then you need to let a nigga know that you married. You, you don't put the nigga in no situation. I'm a, I'm a ass. You know, you single, you married, you separated. What's your status? You know, because I ain't walking in that blind. Cause like I said, nigga, I made you, that. You experienced that already. <laughs> I could I could have ended out bad for me, you know, because I'm I'm jumping off a second story balcony trying to get, you know, <laughs> nigga, I'm listening to a nigga check abroad. And I and and above all that, the sex was horrible. I'm like, bitch, you ain't even got no. Yo, shit, I don't know what it was. It was whack. That's all I could tell you. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I can't even put it in a category. And this shit was whack, nigga. That's all I could say. Like, damn. That shit was wheezag. Man. And I'm like, nigga, you taking a risk on this kind of shit? This. When she was younger, she was fine as fuck. But I ended up catching her up or catching her with everybody. When she was fresh out of high school, she was spoiled. Parents middle class. She had a brand new BMW. It was nice. Mm -hmm. She had multiple options. I think that's what it was. You know, like at that time, I didn't understand 
women have multiple lots, and it was kind of like you looking at them like, well, why you don't really want to fuck with me? And I'm, now that I look back and, and under the G. Gordy plan, now I got crystal clarity. See, there's a lot of stuff I experienced as a young man that I didn't understand. Like my soulmate that I should have married, I didn't understand why I didn't want to marry her because I didn't want to be a stepdad. I got to mm-hmm. admit that because it's Kevin Samuel. I really couldn't identify why I didn't. And I didn't want to admit that. I just wanted to have some sex, but I also really cared about this woman, but I just did not want the responsibility. It was kind of like I was going to have to take my money and pay for her family. I guess that means, like Kevin said, there is no winners when men take his stepdaddies. That's right. I didn't know that. Not to say you didn't know that, but you you know, hey, you didn't want, I mean, exactly, you didn't know that, but, you know, at the end of the day, Playboy, you know, you already know that, you know, 99.9% of the time, you know, in that moment, because everything you're doing, is your first time experience. Was that your first time experience being into a woman like that with kids? Yeah. See? Yo, hey, look at these young, dude. Yeah, I was kind of funny in my 20s, like, why would I want to date? And so when I came out of school, like high school, I was interested in all women, different ages, colors, background. It was just pussy was pussy at that point. Right, right. And right. then I started meeting when I went to West LA College. I started meeting uh, older women. Mm-hmm. And I realized I was still living at home with moms at, at, at 17 in high school. So I started dating older women. So I used to beg my mother to let me stay out all night. And I would date older women because they had their own place. And and they're they're great accommodators. And they're great accommodators. We all experience that. They're great accommodators. Yeah. And, uh, they're going to feed you. They're going to sing. They're going to make you feel, ooh. They're going to make you like a fucking king. They did all that, homie. They did all that. Come on, homie. Ain't nothing changed. They did. Go ahead and preach. They did all that, bro. So, uh, so at the end of the day, that's what I did. But I didn't understand about because I had a bunch of options. And then by okay. twenty, I kind of got into hanging out with this cat named. I met this dude named Tony Willis. Tony Willis was a smaller, was OJ Light. <laughs> okay. Nigga didn't fuck with none more white women. And so me and him got real cool. He actually became one. I actually was my best friend. So I said that nigga multiple times a day. We worked out together. We played ball on Sundays at the gym and, you know, went out clubbing and, you know, did a whole thing with that. And I was in a whole white women thing and they were accommodating. See, 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 but your experience on me is a different energy, dog. You're like, damn, this some different, you know, damn. I'm just saying your personal experience is on me. You cannot, you cannot reinvent your personal experience. You cannot rewrite your personal experience because your experience is different from another nigga's experience. Especially if they never dealt with a white person like you did. That was into you. That's true. That is true. So, uh, that is true. Cause you know what, dude, on any level, especially when it comes to relationships, dude, when you get a person that's pouring into you, my nigga, nigga, that's the ultimate high. That's the closest thing to heaven. That's true. When you I have that you. person that's pouring to you just organically, you not you don't have to pressure this motherfucker, homie, and they just pouring into you organically, yeah, that's the closest thing to heaven. That's true. That's really true. Because I look back at a lot of the relationships that I were in, the women were more into me than I was into them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And because of that, and then I always had multiple women yeah, I was awesome. dealing with simultaneously. Uh-huh. I had a girlfriend, and that was the one, the one that I told you with the two kids I would probably still should have married. And and I was one summer, I just, I don't know what happened, but I just went nuts. I was dating her full time, and I was sleeping with three other women mm-hmm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. 
And my next door neighbor is like, damn, nigga, you got a harem of bitches. And I never really looked at it that way. I just had, I had mm-hmm. all these women who kind of like was checking for me and they would do whatever I asked them to do. Because I remember my girlfriend came by my house, knocked on the door. Her car was there. It was warm, and she was banging on the door. And then this bitch mm-hmm. told me, she get ready to leave. I said, bitch, you going out that window if you leave. You ain't going out the front door. And I told her that, shut the fuck up and be quiet. And my girlfriend left. And she would always, she, I never, she was suspicious, but I never let her catch me with another woman. Right. I was close. Right. She didn't. That motherfucker came over the house a couple of times. I had different women in different situations. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, she had, it was some crazy shit. She was banging on the door. I came by your house at 2 o'clock and your fucking, you know, your car is warm. And I said, yeah, I dropped my car off. And I went around. We went to go to Denny's and then I was about three something, having breakfast and talking shit. Mm-hmm. And she can say about that. And logically, it made sense to me. She had to accept it because there was nothing factual she could nail me with. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I look back. I always had multiple options. And it's like funny to think that the more options that I had for myself, the cockier I became and I treated all women. I let them know. I mean, bitch, you can leave them all. I got two or three of you. Your girlfriend's trying to holler at me low key. Mm. I'll be on late like fat. So I always had women competing for my attention. And then, of course, all yeah, I wanted was Women are very competitive. Women are very competitive, sir. Sir, they went very, women are very competitive. Exactly. So, at the end of the day, it is what it is. But yeah, when a nigga got options, man, it's like, your confidence grows because you got options. You ain't worried about motherfucker leaving. You know, you're going to knock another bitch tomorrow. Shit. And skinny, you're not selling them for bullshit. That's one thing. You're not selling them for bullshit, dude, when you got options. And you're not selling them for no. The word no and bullshit, or let me think about it, or maybe you ain't fucking with it. Nah, and, 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 they, and they know that. Them bitches know they had to take their clothes off to come and fuck with me. That yeah. was like... It was a prerequisite. You wanna get naked now? That was a crazy summer I had to like, damn. On my next door neighbor you should trip off of me. Shit. I had had my girlfriend over Friday night. She stayed till in the morning. We fucked Friday night and we fucked Friday Saturday morning. And then later that afternoon I had another bitch over, fucked her, she went home, and then I had another bitch come over Sunday. Sunday morning and fucked her. And it's like, I fucked like three bitches in a weekend. Four bitches in one weekend. I had everybody on the cycle. I was crazy. Like, nigga, what are you doing? My neighbor was like, damn, nigga, let me just shake your hand. Be like a player. And I thought I was doing something cool, but at the end of the day, it's really a waste of fucking time. But you don't know that till you go through it. I feel it's, like, bro. it's like a nigga gang bang. A nigga might not realize that this shit is a waste of time and then a nigga wake up and then get a state 20 something years out of his life and then nigga 40 years on. He's like, nigga, I'm going to get back on the side while nigga fuck it. I ain't doing this shit right now, nigga. I'll fuck with you niggas. I might not have no get back where I can't do nothing. I'm locked up for the rest of my motherfucking life. And niggas make those kind of decisions, so. So it is what it is, but options, options for a man is empowerment, same way as it's empowerment for a woman. Exactly. They know they got That's options. right right there, but see, women have it young. Women have it when they're teenagers. Women have it in their 20s to their 30s, and then at the 30s, started kind of shifting towards the man side. Unless, unless a woman is super attractive, she's attractive, she always going to have super options if she's attractive. But majority of the women, you know, you know, as in they hit their thirties, they get to they get to changing it, get to switching up on them. That's just true. But see, a man can always get a younger bitch. Yeah, that's true. And when a woman get a younger nigga, she gonna have to pay. It's gonna be her puppy. She got to take care of that nigga. Well, that's true, because a younger nigga with money really 
Yeah, but then again, I had a little bit of change, you know. So if I'm fucking with an older bitch, it was more out of convenience. Yeah, but I'm saying though, skinny, but she's but she's looking some certain type of way. See, most of the older bras that get the younger niggas, you know, like I know they 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 they, they don't have that sexual. How can I, the SMB sexual? They they don't have that look no more. You understand what I'm saying? They may be more accommodator, but they not like like ooh like niggas be checking for them. Well, I don't want to get old, especially them light skinned motherfuckers, homie. That's true. They they be aging differently. So if you had you in your early twenties, your thirties, you in your fifties, bitch, you ain't looking like you know you got the little pot belly, the little plump in the, the little plump in the rump, you know, plump in the bump in your stomach. And she got a double chin, hamburgers, like you got motherfucking hot links on the back of your neck. See, you ain't, you ain't how you was 30 years ago. That's true. And that nigga, and the nigga, and see, that was what I heard about the bras, homie. The nigga, they age, don't want them. The nigga, the nigga, the nigga us as human beings, we'll use any motherfucking body for, 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 for day pleasure or temporary pleasure, but we not finna stay with you. We'll play with you, but we're not gonna stay with you. But when a motherfucker's bitch trying to lock a nigga in, she had to go get a young nigga. A younger motherfucker. You know. Cause he's he's someone that, that she can feel that she can kinda that kinda keep around, like a pet. Somebody she can kinda keep close. Cause you know that 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 alpha energy type nigga, she can't keep him around. Cause he know he got multiple. So she gotta kinda get a nigga that's kinda struggling. A nigga that's kind of lacking financially or don't have a, you know. So women don't just do it. They've been doing it. The ones that are able, whether it's, whether it's a sex nate, whether it was a bra with sex nate or a bra with money. They know, how to, they know how to reel niggas in. That thing in between their legs, food and they, food and pussy, reel niggas in all the time. If they're looking for company, they know how to reel in company if they're looking for company. Yep, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yep. Cause my whole thing is, hey, it was about, hey, who was accommodating? Who's gonna who gonna work with Skinny right where he at? Yes. Without, without the drum in the bush. Yes, and you don't have to say that. You want it organically. You want to say, hey, I need you to do. No, no, no. I want a woman to do. No, no, no. That you got to come organically, my nigga. You can't instruct me to say, man, I need a girl. I'm looking for a woman to do it. No, you can't come like that. That shit got to be organic, nigga. Because when you get oh, to the club, well, you can specify. It's kind of like, no, that's why really me and, and, that, I mean, I'll give you a good example. Right. That's why me and my, my friend, mm-hmm. we we'll never get to the next level, but that's one of the main reasons. Like, I told her one day, we we're talking, and I said, you don't really understand men. And she was kind of like, huh? I said, you really don't understand men and what men want. Like, we were talking, and when she hustled, what I felt like, she kind of hustled me out some money for this fucking Christmas dinner. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I just got voluntarily sucked into something because I was actually creating creating a diversion not to be accountable on that day to her. And because I said my family doing a little something and relatives coming into town. I don't really know. The next thing I know is like what you want. The bottom line is this. When I look at her, like in her mind, she says, I'm cooking. I said, okay, that's nice. Like when I tell her that, and then so we finally got into a conversation. I said, when you tell me you're cooking, what does that really mean to me? Because I said, when I listened to you, we got into a little heated conversation. Here's a good example. I said, when you tell me you're cooking, it does not have any value to me because you haven't made it personal to me. So if you cooking, she said, well, anytime I'm cooking, you're always welcome. But I don't know I'm welcome until you invite me or extend an invitation. Yes. Then it becomes more personal for me. And she goes, well, how could you not know that? I said, because I live in a place where I don't assume shit. Do you realize how many times you told me you was cooking this and cooking that? There's no benefit to me when you tell me you're cooking because you cook and never brought me a plate of food or offered me a plate of food after that statement. So it has no value. And 
She said, well, I think that way because you, you don't cuss. She said, well, I didn't know I had to do that. I said, that's my point example. This is what why you don't understand men. I'm not assuming shit. I do not want to have to ask you for anything, as you said it, and you are a well wisdom beyond your years. You understand it did nothing happens organically with you. I don't need to sit there. Like I could give you the blueprint and coach you and tell me, tell you everything that you need to do in order to get my attention and affection. Mm -hmm. That's that's not a benefit to me. That's giving you cheat notes. I'm not giving you no help handyman notes. Uh... I'm gonna say it again. I'm not giving you no handyman notes so that you can start doing shit for any kind of benefit and favor. If it's not coming organically, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. it. And I told her that. I said, do you realize, like, I've watched you over the last year and some months, and I could count the days where I said, the last time you told me you were cooking, you said, oh, I feel like short ribs. I'm like, okay. And he said, I'm going to get some short ribs. And then it was like, I'm going to cook some short ribs. And so, again, never mention, hey, when I cook some short ribs, I'm going to have you come over and get you a plate. And she asked me, so like, if you was having short ribs, what would you want with them? What would you have with them? I said, well, I'm a big, you know, we're on steak and potatoes is always a classic. And then some kind of green vegetable, some zucchini and some squash or something like that. You know, or even a nice kale salad or something like that, but definitely some greens. Right. And, you know, and I tried to, I broke it down yesterday and we got kind of heated. I said, this is why you need to understand why I think the way I think when you say things. Because I've watched you chase after these old women running around doing shit for them. And I know specifically you're doing because you tell me. I was like, when am I going to get some fried chicken? Well, I got to cook something for Miss Betty. Or I got to cook something for Miss Irma. Or I got to do this. Every time you said you were cooking, it was always for somebody else. So why would I assume that you're cooking for me? Mm-hmm. Because you were a person like you told me specifically you was cooking for them. I said, does that make sense? She said, yeah. I said, so how the fuck do you expect me to understand that that's an actual invitation to me when you are cooking in general? Mm-hmm. I've never been a recipient from your cooking in over a year. And she's like, oh, my God. It's like I was ready to hang up because I said, when you say, if you're going to do something, then offer an invitation. Men don't read between the lines, especially me. No, because no. I've listened to you talk about cooking for older other people for over a year, and it has never, ever benefited me. Not one time. Mm. So how the fuck would I, would I expect this to benefit me? I just listen and go, okay, well, that's nice. Because there's nothing else for me to ask. Mm. And, I said, have you ever listened to my tonality? Doesn't it change because you're telling me something that has no direct benefit to me? And then she kind of like went on, well, the guy I was dating, I said, do not tell me about another nigga that you didn't cook because he liked to eat out and he was picky. I said, <laughs> I, said that, I said, I don't even want to listen to that. It has no value to me. It's not going to make me change and it's not, it's just pointless. It's like, it's almost like a diversion, a smoke queen. You're telling me about another nigga I don't want to hear about. You're telling me about a nigga that you cook all the time, but he didn't eat it. Well, how does, how does, I said, by you telling me this story, what value is that to me? Tell me, how should I list, how should I take that? Did that going to help me understand why you haven't given me an invitation when you cook? Yes or no? She said, no. I said, that's my point. I said, you kind of delusional. That's why I said, you do not understand men. If I cook, and I know I'm going to cook for you, hey, I'm going to cook this, I'm going to invite you over, and I'm going to make you dinner. See, that's an invitation. Don't tell a motherfucker you just going to cook, and then that nigga pulls the figure. I ain't one of these niggas going to invite myself over nothing. I don't do that. And you said it, Betty, that's why you wise beyond your years. You wise because you understand it didn't. Nothing you do happens organically. Mm. Al- almost nothing you do is organic. It either comes from indirect comments through me, 
whether it's subliminal or subconscious or conscious. And I don't like doing that because I could tell you in my mind, I could tell you everything you need to do to get my attention. But that's not going to work. Then it's like, I want to see it, like you said, organically come from the heart. And I go mm-hmm. back and look for women who have done things for me organically. Those are the women I always fall for. I don't have to ask them to do shit. I didn't have to ask my girlfriend in eight years to cook me a plate of food. I didn't have to tell her to suck my dick. That motherfucker treated me like a sex object. Facts. Which, Facts. That motherfucker, would, I could come over there, and I'm thinking we just having a casual dinner night and eat and movie night. And this motherfucker coming to the door with some lingerie on, with a sexy little trench coat on, with some heels, and she knew I like fishnets. She knew she knew to dress up and be making dinners and that shit and drinking wine and getting fucked up and coming over there and I'm sitting on the couch getting fucked up on some weed and alcohol and my dick hard and, and she like take a minute and they could come over and get the knee pads out and get the give me that crazy motherfucking sloppy and go back and cook. What man is not going to stay engaged with that type of shit? That's exciting. This is a bitch who's going to take me to a restaurant we have in dinner, and this motherfucker pull my dick out un- in the restaurant under the table, giving me a hand job and playing with my dick and licking the little pre-cum juice on her fingers. That's a nasty motherfucker. That motherfucker going to keep me engaged. Homie, women know what the fuck to do to keep. Come That's on, real sad. They know. Facts. All women know this. You see, they don't do niggas because they don't like you like that. Well, this motherfucker say she like me like that, but she don't know what to do. I agree 100%. And that's why I made the statement. I said, you don't understand men. You don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. What you do is organic. Yeah, yeah. The only, and I told her, I said, the only reason why I got to taste this short with, because I had an appointment for this lady who lived on 56 and fucking San Pedro. And I went by her place and hollered at her. And I said, well, if you home, I'm going to swing by. I got an appointment. That happened to be the night she busted out the short mitts. Had I not had that appointment, I would have never got no short mitts. Mm. And then the short mitts wasn't that good, you know, because it didn't have enough marbling in it. And it was a little chewy, but everything else was good. So you kept trying to, you want to take a plate with you? I said, no, I don't. I'm good. I had the potatoes. You got some potatoes? Yeah, I don't want no more meat. But that shit was kind of tough. I didn't want to say it was tough. I like, you know, when you get red meat, my preference is I like fat. Oh, my God. That's that marble. That's where you get your fat. Oh, my God. She's pretending she's disabled. 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 Oh, my God. She's pretending she's well, I should have did this. I said, don't get bu-. I said, don't ask me if you don't want the truth. You want to politically correct. I said, this shit was a little. I said, you know, it had nothing to do with your skills. It was just, it was a little chewy. I said, it was a little chewy. And, you know, I said, but you don't get me. It's like you said, a bitch that really want to get a nigga's attention going to do the shit that a man like. Cook for the nigga. I said, man, are really simple. It ain't no I- all you gotta do is feed us some fuckers and know it. Bro, Give they, a, bro, bro. They, women are bras already know what to do to get a nigga interest. They know, homie. Don't forget, man. Women were advanced before when we was boy. Everybody was in their young teens, man. Women was fucking with grown ass niggas, homie. Women are advanced. Women all has been fucking with old ass niggas before the Jews been fucking with pussy. Women are already girls were already fucking with we, before we before we even knew what a pussy looked like. The majority of them. Yeah, you're right. You're 100% correct. And so I was looking at her, and I still look at her. I'm like, you can never get wiped up. You don't know what to fucking do. You think you can run around this motherfucker and not be fucking, you know, sucking a dick or fucking a dick at least three times a week and cooking a nigga a plate of food and it's organically? <laughs> That's basic shit. Fact. What do, what do men really want for women? Sex and food. 
<laughs> they, ain't asking, they, they ain't not answering for your money. They ain't answering for your finances. They ain't asking for you to pay their bills. Hey, Playboy, they ain't asking for niggas to pay their bills. I don't really, I don't want to ask her for nothing. No, I'm so just saying, I, though, in general, I'm just saying in general, niggas ain't asking no bras to pay their bills. But unless it's a Pookie and Ray Ray type yeah, thing. Yeah, but, but that's a different, that's a whole different, bro, but that's a whole different situation. Right. About the, the majority. The bro, I'm, not, I'm not asking, bro, they like, hey, can you, you know, you pay my, 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 uh, No, Apple. no, 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 the bitches ain't doing it no way. If they, if they not liking you like that, if they only, they sexually attracted, they do anything to sexually attracted. They're not sexually attracted to you. They ain't doing shit. Period. They're not even finna fuck with you if they're not sexually attracted to you. Unless they're trying to use you for something. Your reason, but as far as them giving, they have to be sexually attracted to you. That's well, the I way. think that the broad, I think that she is sexually attractive. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, okay. But the lack of follow through, and then the body is just. I'm kind of like at this point, kind of turned off. The body is too old. It can't okay, go. But that, okay, okay, okay. Um, it doesn't have enough life, and I don't want to be the aggressor to push that shit. It does not have enough life and energy in it. Okay, I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. The lubrication ain't there, and, you know, the attitude ain't there. So it's like, why push that? I ain't getting no food, so uh, <laughs> what, what am I doing? Hey, right? yo, Kenny, you're too much like work, man. It's too much like work. Actually, that, man. That's why I said you wise beyond you. That's exactly it, my nigga. It, the whole process feels like work, and, and you still not benefit. And you still not benefit. And the reciprocal benefit Ooh. is not. This is a waste. I'm just killing time with this bar until I meet somebody better. Shit, if something better come along that's more cooperative, submissive, and friendly, and a little bit more subservient, this motherfucker clueless. Absolutely. I say you absolutely clueless to men. A smart woman would have said, would you care to elaborate on that? And I'd have been like, and I told a woman, many, a lot of women I meet, I said, well, what do you think you know about men? What do you think we motivated by? That's a great question to ask a woman, even on first date. Yeah, yeah. What do you think women, and it's interesting what they come up with. First thing they say is sex. I said, that's true. Well, um, who controls the sex, men or women? Uh, well, it could be 50 50. I said, You're wrong. I said, In my world, you're wrong. She said, How am I wrong? I said, Because women control 100% of the sex. And I made a joke. I said, You want me to tell you how powerful women are? Women control 100% of all the sex and 50% of the money if they're in a relationship. And she died laughing. And they do. I said, I'm not the guy to initiate sex. I am a man who is smart enough and patient enough to play the weight game. And the weight game comes from me of stimulating your mind, uh, being thoughtful, uh, being a great conversationalist and a good listener and being your friend. I'm all about me. I, the way I approach work and the way I offer policies to my clients. Notice I didn't say sale. The way I offer policies to my client comes through rapport building. I said, I'm interested in you. I need to find out who you are, what your interests are, what, you know, likes and dislikes. I need stuff, information, so that I can organically stimulate you with that stuff. You know, if you like to read, then I might have to brush my game up and start reading. You go, what's the last book? Oh, I read Grant Cardone 10X, and it's a motivational book about, you know, stepping out on faith and really going forward and achievement and blah, blah, blah. And so I rather peel you that way, you know. I rather peel you with sexual energy without really touching you per se. So a good first date for me, my old days, I used to take women out. I learned how to salsa then. So I used to take women out salsa then. She said, Where are we going? I said, We going downtown. I said, We going to um to this nightclub. Oh, okay. And she think we're going to hip hop. She said, Why is there a lot of Latino people? Because I said, We going salsa dancing. Oh, I don't know how to sauce. I said, you just follow me and do what I do and get yourself a nice drink and have fun. It was the perfect way for me. I'm like, I'm sticking with this plan because it was the perfect way for me if I have sexual energy or attraction to the woman, which I do, because why should I be dating her? Because right. obviously I want to. I could touch her without being a pervert. Right. I could kind of get close and. I could kind of get under her ear and let her touch me and let her feel me and grab me 
And with a little bit of wine, she's starting to feel in that nigga body, you know, we could touch and we could be flirty and touchy. That's a great energy for a first date. Great energy, especially mm-hmm. if you had a conversation and, you know, you got some like minded in, you drink a little bit of wine and then basically she touching. So nigga like, what should I do? I said, man, I took it to the car. Oh, nigga, you took it downtown? No, nigga, we went salsa then. Salsa then? What kind of shit is that? Nigga, it's the best way to touch a bitch without being a pervert. The fuck you are. You ever watch them salsa dancers? Mm. You see, it's a lot of spinning and touching. I said, thank you. Get it? Nigga's like, oh, shit. He's like, my nigga, that's gang like a motherfucker. I said, yeah, man, you better learn how to salsa. Nigga, bitches like that shit. Bitches equate if you can move your hips and shake your bonbon like Ricky Martin, you can fuck. It don't mean you can't, but in they mind, they running with that shit. Who that nigga right. shaking his ass and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. You know, so at the end of the day, I like, you said something like I said, well beyond your years. I, as a man, prefer for things to happen organically. I do not like asking women for shit because it obligates me for some type of payment or restitution or they get to ask me for something back. Yep. And the shit that they might ask me for <clears throat> might be monetary shit or some other bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, I'd rather not. Like with her, I'd rather not ask for shit. I've learned how to stay in my boundaries. I don't give advice no more because it, she's not going to do anything with it. I don't tell her, you need to get you a AAA card, you know, because your car is old, it's going to break down, and you're not prepared, and it's going to create an, another emotional crisis if you get stuck way out in no man's land. Mm-hmm. And Ain't nobody, as a, and then you got to call people, your son or other people. You're not setting yourself up to, I say you, right now you're going through a crisis, a little struggle. And I said, you need to kind of position yourself to become a lot more independent mm-hmm. with the things that you can control. $50 for a AAA membership is not going to break you. You know what I mean? That's something, but I can't tell her that. But she gets all fucking butt hurt and deep. So when shit hit the fan, then you all fucking lose it. And I said, some things you can avoid and some things you can control. You need to control. That's something you can control. So nothing happens organically. That's why I'm not engaged. I don't ask for sex. I don't ask for food. That's why I ask. I ask not. I get not. I don't want a woman. I got to ask. I want the shit to happen organically. And like you said earlier. Women know what to do when they like a man, and they want to, they want to be with that nigga. What? They know they do. They just do it That's naturally. Cool. They do the touchy feely. Come on, homie. Come on, dog. That was the one thing that my my little girlfriend of eight years. I when I go back to her, it was really one of the more healthier, emotionally healthy, more fulfilling relationships. That woman always fucking touched me. Nigga, she was always massaging my neck and my back and feeling my body. And, you know, it made a nigga stay in the gym because the bitch just kind of like worshiped it. When I was in shape, shape, shit, the bitch kind of worshiped the body. She just be coming, looking at me. She was just like, oh my God, you just, she always said the right shit. You just so fucking yummy. I just want to suck your dick right now. I'm like, oh, hey, <laughs> You know, she was impulsive and just, you know, this old motherfucker over here is just, in her mind, she just did. I'm like, who gonna fuck with you? You don't do enough. You don't even do just enough to get by. Mm. If, if the pussy was wet, you could probably get some repeat business, but that motherfucker drives the Mojave Desert. Mm. Niggas will come around for some good pussy. You know that, and I know that. Mm-hmm. What niggas gonna hang around and for some bad pussy? Not me. Not many. But 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 the cold part is you said, like I said, well, one of the, the number one rules why dudes don't come back because your 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 stuff is whack. It's boo boo. Your coochie ain't no good. That's why niggas don't. Fuck, but a lot of niggas, but some motherfuckers ain't gonna ever tell a bitch that shit because no. if a broad may have something that they can use from a bitch. They they gonna keep the door opportunity like women do niggas they are gonna keep the door opportunity open. But they, they, right, you gonna keep the door open. I ain't gonna close the door. Yeah, and keep, oh, you know, you, gonna, fender, bro. you know, you might need to drive a car or uh, slide you, you know, oh, something, you know, money, money or bring some. 
to the table. No, so you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna, gonna buck it up. You just gonna, you gonna ease back. You gonna ease back. Yep. I act like you never left. Exactly, exactly. But you've been busy, girl. You know I'm busy. Woo, woo, woo. Now, nah, nigga, you know, hey, that right there. But yeah, but yeah, but if you don't, if you don't diss the broad and make her feel like she shit and she left, man, and like the bitch come across her, you know. A fucking lottery ticket or something. Or man. anything, anything of value that can that that can that can add some bring some bad bring some value to. Because one thing about us as human beings, anything we know that possibility a person brings some value to you in some type of way, say it was information, information, conversation, or whatever it may be. Guess what, bro? We ain't finna we ain't finna we ain't finna bust a motherfucker up like that. We gonna just be kind of eased back. And go and do something. They say, hey, guess what, Skinny? I got this for you, man. Hey, Skinny, I know what, man. Exactly. I know, blah, blah. I know Magic, man. He want to meet you. You know what I'm saying? So you, we, we, as, as human beings, we're not going to fuck nothing off. That's a motherfucker straight sour. That's a motherfucker straight sour power. A person straight sour power, we're going to chop your ass. We're going to chop your ass. Like, ah, get up out of here. Right. Exactly right. So I'm not... I'm not trying to throw the broad in the ditch. I do realize that she's a person of value, just not anything long term for me to be in a one on one at the current under the under the current status quo. There's not enough value. Exactly. It's like it's like you were able to navigate the bullshit chart. There's no value in that one for me. Very little. Mm-hmm. You know, even like just trying to go out like she likes to have a date when she goes out so a lot of people have become accustomed to me showing up with her and what's interesting at least tells you how to broad is she'll sleep i've met five of her older girlfriends mm-hmm. she always hung around older lady when she was young mm-hmm. okay and all these old women have met me and every single one of them, there's five. And they like ask her, Is this your boyfriend? Oh. And she would say, No, he's just my friend. Oh. The 91 year old in Compton, this Betty said, How come that man 